Hi, I'm Dr. Chuck Betters. Welcome to Ask Dr. Betters. We raise questions, or you raise questions that I try to answer from a biblical perspective every week. Many, many of those questions revolve around what happens when we die? What happens when we go to heaven? Is heaven a real place? Uh, We're producing a series and it will start unfolding, hopefully soon, on all of the questions that you have raised about heaven. One of them is, I think, pretty typical. It comes from somebody named L.W. I have a question. At the moment of death, are we in the presence of Jesus? The very definition of death is when our spirit, which is created in the image and likeness of God, disengages from our body. When our spirit leaves our body, that is called death. We know what happens to the body. The body goes to the grave or to the ground. It decays. It returns to the dust from which it was made. But what happens to the spirit? Well, we have several passages that tell us most definitively what happens to the spirit. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, uh, the two thieves, one on his right, one on his left, both mocked him. But something happened with one of the thieves that maybe he sensed the, the hollowness of his mockery and he turned, he repented. He actually rebuked the other thief and said, this man's done no wrong, we're getting what we deserve. And then he turns to Jesus and says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now in just a few hours from that point, Jesus' spirit would leave his body. He says that, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit, and then he died. That's the definition of death, when the spirit leaves the body. So where did Jesus go, spiritually speaking, when he left his body? He told the thief on the cross where he was going and then announced to him that the thief was also going with him. What did he say? Today, you will be with me in paradise. So Jesus' spirit went to heaven and he took the spirit of the thief on the cross with him immediately to heaven. You know, the apostle Paul was probably the greatest Christian who ever lived. Uh, He tells us, it gives us a litany uh, in 2 Corinthians 11, I believe it is, of all the suffering that he had to endure in his life. All kinds of physical, horrible suffering. And he calls that all rubbish. He says, I would, I would, I would take it again uh, with no thought given because of this. He says in Philippians 1, 21, he says, um, it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but will with full courage, not at now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. And he says this, for me to live, in other words, if God's going to extend my life, for me to live is Christ. I'm going to live my life for the gospel. And to die is gain. There it is. When he dies, his destiny is the same as that of the thief on the cross, to be in the presence of the Lord. If I am in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I'm hard pressed between two things. My desire is to depart That means die. And what? Be with Christ. For that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. account. Convinced of this, 
I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith so that in me you may have simple cause to glory in Christ because of my coming to you again. He makes two determinations. If I'm going to live, it's for your benefit so that I can continue to edify you in the gospel of Jesus. But if I die, it is gain. It is my gain. I will live with Christ. So the answer to your question is simple. The moment our spirit gives way and disengages from our body, we physically die, but we are eternally, immediately in the presence of the Lord. There is no soul sleep. Uh, there is no limbo or purgatory or some intermediate state. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, just like the thief on the cross. I hope this helps. Hi, my name is Melissa Weisenfels, Executive Director here at Mark Inc. Ministries. Thank you so very much for your continued support of this video series. Ask Dr. Betters is not meant to be a substitute for professional counseling, but instead is designed to extract biblical principles around the questions being asked. We encourage you to seek professional counseling if needed.